Let's ask Scott Geekus what he thinks of the day's trade here so far. Scott, uh, we've got crop tours. We've got um, surveys taking place. There's all kinds of interest in how good this crop is or what it may make. Is the jury still out on all of this until we maybe get to December? Uh, is that why this market doesn't seem to want to get too far out of its comfort zone so far? Yeah, in my opinion, I definitely think so. Uh, and, you, you know, you have no idea where these real numbers are actually. So, yeah, the USDA come out with one set of numbers. Now the crop tour came out with another set of numbers. The private surveys have another set of numbers. So the numbers are very unclear. No one knows what really to make the trading decisions on. So right now, <clears throat> with all that being said, because you don't know what the actual data is, you just got to follow the technical analysis. All the charts are point and lower. All the charts are in almost in the oversold territory for corn and soybeans you have a lot of puts being active you still have a little upside skew as far as the options go to the call side uh, that's just typically normal just due to the grains overall uh, the the risk is always going to be to the upside not necessarily to the downside you know the wheat market is a little bit odd because you have a little bit more calls being active than puts so we're going to wait and see how this is all really going to play out i know for a lot of the corn farmers that we've been talking to we are watching for the crop uh, progress report uh, later today. Scott, is there any way to get an idea of uh, just how how uneasy this market may be if we if we look at what's going on over in the options market? Is that ever a gauge here? Uh, in, in, in the past, it has been a very good indication. Uh, lately, it hasn't been only because the data is all over the board. Uh, there's not really any consistency in the data. All right. Uh, any other thoughts? And what about trade volume? Is uh, is that what what kind of volume? Yeah, do we, well, see we on always this look at trade volume going into reports, going in after reports. Uh, last few days, the re the volume has been on a little bit average or a little bit below average. Nothing really is sparking any type of uh, high volume interest. Okay, we'll be back in just a moment with Scott Geekus, and uh, we've got more coming up. So don't go anywhere. Come back and join us here on the Market Age Report. What do you think of this livestock trade here today, uh, Scott? We've uh, we've seen higher all the way across the board. Some are calling this possibly a bounce. What do you call it? Well, it, it really depends on how you want to look at the cattle market in particular. So there was concerns about the Kansas plant being shut down, whether or not the other plants can make up for the lack of production. So with the slaughter rate coming in around 9,000 ahead, you know, that's a little bit supportive with cattle prices, as we can see in the futures. So with the it's it's if we can continue with the slaughter rate making up for that loss of production with the kansas plant we expect cattle prices to continue a little bit higher on the other side with the pork side uh, we're look we're always going to be watching the chinese pork prices right now they're about up 26 percent versus uh, just on a month 86 percent versus last year so that's very very supportive you know with the only thing that's very determining or a little bit deterrent in the hog market is we need the exports to show up. So we're going to be watching the, the cutouts. If we can continue to have higher cutouts, we're going to be hopeful that the exports are going to show up. If the exports show up, obviously we expect prices to continue a little bit higher. If the exports don't show up, we expect to either trend a little bit lower or consolidate sideways. All right, Scott, thanks a lot for the insight. Scott Geekus there at the edge of the trading floor. He's with Walsh Trading.